So this shop on Etsy has been earning over $30,000 a month and the crazy thing about it is they just started four months ago doing something easy and passive. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to start a shop like this. And no, you don't need any skills, experience, or a lot of money to start. Because I'm going to teach you every single step, including how to create the artwork and all the tools that you need. So if you make it through the entire video, by the end, you'll know everything you need to start this business. So let's get started. So the shop we're talking about here is called Shades of Drops. And you see that they're selling digital backdrops, which are basically backgrounds photographers will use to overlay their subjects on. So back in the day, if you were a photographer and you wanted to achieve a shot like this, you have to do it manually. First, you'll need to buy the angel wings or rent the space. And that's if you can find a place like this. And even if you found the place, you have to pay for the transport, bring all the equipments to the set. But today, with the help of AI, you can achieve the same results by using a digital backdrop. You can simply take a photo of the subject in the comfort of a studio and with minimal editing skills, overlay the image to the digital backdrop. And that's precisely how this shop has been making over $30,000 a month doing that. Now, the best thing about this business is that you're selling a digital product which means that you can start creating right away with zero or very minimal cost. And because you're using AI to create these images, you can create it right now and list them for sale in just a few hours. And the crazy thing is that most of what you make is purely profit. And from experience, if you're selling on Etsy, you'll make about over 93% in profits, which is incredible. You'll also notice that this shop sells their backdrops for about $15 to $18. Now, if you stick to the very end of the video, I'll be sharing one simple trick that can increase your average order value by about $40 to $50. And yes, people will still pay for it, but more on that later. Now, relative to other digital products like digital planners or t-shirts, this market is still quite unsaturated, which means that there's still not a lot of competition. So it's a really good time to get in. Now, let's start creating. We're going to use Midjourney to create these images. So for those of you who doesn't know, Midjourney is a text-to-image generation tool that works on Discord. So you simply need to sign up to Midjourney and Discord and you can sign up for free. So to get started, head on to Midjourney and click on join the beta. Accept the invite. And you'll also need a Discord account. And once everything is set up, you can add Midjourney to your own server so you don't see other people's images. Now you can click on the plus sign here and create your own server. Then you can go to Midjourney, click on any of the newcomer rooms, click on the Midjourney bot and add it to your own server. Now we're ready to start giving Midjourney our prompts. Okay, so we're gonna start with this prompt I created before. Ultra realistic and extra large white angel wings with real feathers as a digital backdrop in a rustic palace contemporary cinematic lighting and I'm gonna put ultra wide shot mid journey version 5 and let's put the aspect ratio to 16 by 9. So after a bit of research I found that there's a certain way you can structure your prompt to generate the best images. So first you want to start with the subject where in this case is the white angel wings and I found that when you put the word ultra realistic it tends to produce more feathers on the wings and it looks super realistic so and then you can include the place in this case is a rustic palace and i always like to add the term cinematic lighting to the style i think that just gives it a better lighting and some of you are aware that mid journey is already at version 5 so you can add dash dash v5 at the end and you want to put the expect ratio at 16 by 9. This is usually the expect ratio that I use for backdrops. This way you have a bigger real estate to work with. And there's also one more keyword that I like to add to my prompts. You can use this keyword to bring your artwork to another level. And the keyword I'm talking about here is adding an artist name. Yes, including an artist name will bring your artwork to the level of the artwork the artist produced. And I'm gonna share with you this incredible resource where you can find hundreds or even thousands of artists and pick the style that you want. But please note that when you open the file, it takes a bit of time to load. So that's why you're seeing some black empty cells here and there. So give it some time and you can see all the images. Now, just as a disclaimer, I'm not the one who created this list. It's been created by someone who goes by the name Randolin4785. 
So credits to him by creating this resource. And this person has been generous enough to share this with everybody to use. So I'm going to leave a link to the file in the description for you. But let's leave the artist's name out for now and let's see what Midjourney comes up with. Let's generate the image. Now this looks amazing, look at that. Now if you're happy with the image, you can upscale the image and download it. But if you want a slightly different variation of the images here, you can either click on regenerate here, which will refresh all the images. Or if you like a specific image, but you want another variation of it, you can click on V on the bottom here. So for example, if you want a new variation of image one, you click on V1. And if you don't already know, Midjourney version five does have improved resolution. So if you prompt an image, all four images produced are already upscaled by default. So let's say if you want to use the first image, you can click on U1 and it will render that image instantaneously because it's already been upscaled. And just like that, I can open it in a browser and you can use the full size image. Now I've heard from some people that some images generated are blurry even after scaling up. So if you have an image that is not as high res as you want it, you can easily use a free AI upscaler like Upscale Media. You can just upload your image set it to 4x upscale and just in a few seconds you have your upscaled image and you can download it and look guys since you're selling digital backdrops to photographers the last thing they want to see is pixelated or blurry images so make sure that your images are higher resolution so they're easy to edit and work with and trust me you don't want to skip this step now that you already know how to create the backdrops it's time to create the listing images to show how a person would look like on the backdrops and as you can see, these types of backdrops are used for maternity or bridal shots. Now you might be asking, where can you find these images of people that I can use for my listing? Yes, you can use Midjourney to create these people as well. So not only can Midjourney create the backdrop, they can also create the subject. All right, let's go back to Midjourney and ask it to generate a detailed photograph of a pregnant woman in a long, extravagant white dress on a white background taken with a high resolution DSLR camera in an in editorial photography style using a telephoto lens with cinematic lighting. And make sure you want to add ultra wide shot in version 5 and set the aspect ratio to 16-9. And let's generate. Will you look at that? That's just incredible, but creepy. So all of this looks super real, except for the first one here. The leg is just a little funky. Okay, so the third one looks pretty good. Let's just use that for now. So I'm gonna hit U3 and download the image. So now that you created the subject, the next step is to overlay the subject onto the backdrop. So the fast and easy way is to use Canva. And the first step is to upload the image of the subject and place it on top of the backdrop. And once you're done, you can click on edit photo and Canva has this cool feature called the background remover where with just one click you're able to remove the background just like that now you can adjust the subject so it's positioned correctly on the backdrop and once it looks good you want to adjust the colors so it matches the background you can click on edit photo again and there's a tool called auto adjust where it will automatically adjust the color and the lighting to match the background Cool, right and you can also adjust the intensity or if you want to be more detailed you can also manually adjust the contrast the brightness or the highlights and you'll get a stunning looking image oh and I also like to play with the beginning so the dress blends into the floor nicely Wow, I'm actually loving it. it looks really really good now once you're happy with the image you can add a text in the middle for your listing and if you're selling a pack of 10 backdrops, you can drag and drop the images like this. You can put two images side by side and create five sets of these images. And you can also add a watermark so nobody steals your images. Now in the beginning of the video, I mentioned that I'll be sharing a tip to increase your average order value. And if you're selling digital backdrops like this, you can simply add a customization element to your offer. You can charge anywhere between 30 to $40 to add a customer's photo to the backdrop they purchased from you. Yes, you need to manually edit the images for each order, but you're charging money for it. And just take a look at other sellers who are charging a minimum of $50 to place a customer's photo into a background photo. 
and they charge more depending on the difficulty level. So you can see that there's a demand for it and you can definitely take advantage of it. If I was a photographer with a lot of photos to edit, I would definitely pay for the service and it just completes my job faster. And on the other hand, if I was the subject and I already have that picture of me taken by a photographer, I can simply purchase the backdrop for $15 and add another $30, $40 to have the seller edit the photo for me. And it will certainly be cheaper than going through a photographer to do it. So it's just a no-brainer for me. And the best thing is that there's no cost for you to add that option. And now that you're ready with the listing images, make sure you optimize your listing on Etsy to quickly get discovered on the platform. So I use a tool called Everbee that can check your competitor's listings, see how much they're making, including the tags that they're using for the listings. And you can also see how much search volume each keyword is getting each month. So you wanna make sure that you're using these keywords in your listings, the titles, descriptions, and tags. Now, the only way that this can really work though is obviously you gotta be able to create good design. But if you wanna see other Etsy shops that's making over $20,000 a month, watch this video next. This is where I walk through four other stores that are killing it on Etsy and how you can start. So watch that video next and I'll see you there.